In this video, you will learn what items you will need to put into your emergency kit to treat water four common ways. You will also learn some things to consider about each method. Having safe drinking water during an emergency is absolutely critical because people can survive for weeks without food, but only days without water. When putting together your emergency kit, it's important to store as much water as you can. Here in the Pacific Northwest, the general rule is to have one gallon of water per person per day stored in your home to last you 14 days. You should also have at least one way to treat more water. The good news is that there are multiple ways of treating water during an emergency, but the effectiveness of each of the treatment methods discussed in this video will depend on the quality of your emergency water source. Here are three things to consider when deciding which water treatment option to add to your emergency kit. One, where you might find more water in an emergency. Two, how much water you'll have to treat. Three, what treatment or combination of treatments you will need to make the water safe to drink. Removing bacteria, viruses and cysts require more robust treatment than removing silt or other particles. Now, let's take a look at four different ways to treat your water and some of the things to consider with each method. Unscented liquid household chlorine bleach is great to have on hand because it can be used to treat water and it can be used for sanitation purposes. It is also inexpensive. Bleach kills most harmful or disease-causing viruses and bacteria, but it's not as effective against the more resistant parasites Giardia and Cryptosporidium. So an important consideration when adding bleach to your kit is that you buy the unscented kind. Also, bleach loses its potency over time, so you're gonna have to replace it about every year. Items to add to your kit for this process include bleach, measuring spoons, or a dropper. Instructions for how much bleach to add per gallon. It differs for clear and cloudy water. For clear water, add an eighth of a teaspoon of bleach, and for cloudy water, add a quarter of a teaspoon of bleach. Another treatment option to use is water purification tablets. The effectiveness of these tablets depends on a couple of things, water temperature, pH level, and clarity. They also lose their effectiveness after their expiration date or once their package has been opened. So with this option, be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions carefully. Items to add to your kit for this process include water purification tablets. A third option is to use a personal water filter. There are many types of personal water filters to choose from. Some of them are better at filtering out microorganisms than others. When selecting your water filter, look for one that can filter out the amount of water you'll need. Some of them are designed for use by one person, while others are designed to filter out a higher volume of water. You'll want to get a filter that has a pore size small enough to remove bacteria and parasites. Many water filters don't remove viruses typically found in human and animal fecal waste. Items to add to your kit for this process include personal water filter. A fourth option is to boil your water. Now, depending on the nature of the emergency, you may not have access to your kitchen stove, which is why it's important to have another way to heat your water. If you have a camp stove or can safely build a fire outside, you will want to store this item so they can be safely accessed during an emergency. Boiling kills disease-causing organisms such as viruses, bacteria, and parasites. The only time that boiling isn't a great option is if the water has been contaminated with hazardous chemicals. Boiling can concentrate these and make the water unsafe. Items to add to your kit for this process include pot to boil water, pot holders, fuel source such as firewood or gas to power your camp stove, waterproof matches. Regardless of how you choose to treat your water, your kit should include a clean cloth to strain particles from the water and a clean resealable containers to store and treat your water. For more information about each of the water treatment processes mentioned in this video, visit www.regionalh2o.org. You'll also find printable versions of the instructions covered in this video, more how-to videos, and additional resources to help you get prepared. Now, now it's time, time for you to, to get, get your, your kit together. The Regional Water Providers Consortium created this instructional video as a courtesy to provide general guidelines for four common emergency water treatment methods and suggested materials to include in an emergency kit. In all cases, the consortium recommends following the manufacturer's instructions when available for each water treatment process. The consortium does not endorse any of the products used in this video, assumes no liability for the use of any depicted products, and is not responsible for any ill health effects or damage to you or your home from following the instructions described in this video. The products and methods shown here are not exhaustive, and the public is encouraged to do their own research on which treatment methods and products will best meet their own anticipated emergency water treatment needs.